not far away. Let's talk story. It's where my mama was born, it's where I come from, it's where my daddy fell in love not long ago. Aloha everyone, this is Larry Camp, and welcome to the Nobody Knows Your Story podcast, which just happens to come with a side of Hawaiiana. Nobody Knows Your Story is a podcast which I believe will impact each listener in a positive way. As you listen to the experiences that have transformed, shaped, and guided each guest, perhaps you'll better understand your own personal journey. Some will surprise, some will make you question, and some will inspire, but all will leave you in a better place for listening in. As for the Hawaiiana, well, that's just a big part of my life story. So I invite you to check in from time to time, or better still, Add Nobody Knows Your Story to your list of favorite podcasts. You'll enjoy hearing the life experiences of people just like you. Hello once again, and thank you for choosing to listen to another interesting life story. Now, we just heard Wanalua perform Ku'u Lehua. And mid-podcast, we're going to listen to Feel the Sunshine from Koloi Kai, a group known for their island reggae, or as I once called it, Jawaiian music. Now, this type of music has long been one of my favorites, so naturally, I like sharing and introducing the listeners around the world to this type of music. Again, please purchase their music and email me at any time if you have questions about the artist or about some of their music or where you can find it. These guys have to work three, four jobs many times because they might be big names in Hawaii or in the Pacific, but the rest of the world, well, they're just finding out, and it's part of what I like doing is sharing their music. Today, Sam Mitchell will be sharing his story with us. And like everyone, Sam's story is unique to him. He's young in years, but is doing so much to help others. I thought it would be fun to hear his story. Plus, he likes Jimmy Buffett. (laughs) Sam, welcome to Nobody Knows Your Story. Well, thank you for having me on, Mr. Camp. Good to be here. It's your story. I always tell, that's kind of how I start off. If you listen to very many of my episodes, I always say that, well, it's your story, so tell it any way you want. But you know, Sam, there's a couple things that you're doing, and I know we're going to talk about them because it's a big part of your life. So yeah, let's just get into it. I know you're from Bloomington, Indiana, and when when I saw that, I thought of a movie I saw years ago called Breaking Away. Did you ever see that movie, or are you familiar with it? No, I'm afraid not, but I've heard of Hoosiers. Well, there you go. We all know that movie. Great movie. But yeah, Breaking Away was about a bike. It was a guy that rode bikes, and I think it was back in the 70s or 80s, long before your time. But uh, who knows? Maybe your mom knows about it. Probably. She's probably around that age, so yeah. So, hey, let's just talk about your uh, when you were growing up. I mean, I know a little bit about you, but what are some of the memories you have from your early life? They're not Hawaiian theme. Let's tell you that much. They're more like the the dark theme. Um, It just stunk. It was just excluded. I got bullied. I don't all the stereotypes that come with autism. I say it's because I'm on the autism spectrum. And it was frustrating because no one gave you a chance. Right. And we should say that that's one of the things that you're doing is you're helping educate people about autism. I know just in watching your uh, TED talk that you did, you know, said one in 54 children have 
uh, been diagnosed with autism and that that number is growing. Is that right? Oh, yeah. That that 154 is a little outdated. It's now 1 in 36. Okay. Yeah, I guess you did your TED Talk three or four years ago. But yeah, it's a it's something that's out there. And if if people don't know somebody with autism, well, let me put it this way. They probably do know somebody with autism if they just think about it. I've actually had another guest on my podcast um, who's autistic and you know, she told her story and she's from South Carolina. And so it's, it's, you know, I have family members. I mean, yeah, you're right. I, and that's one of the things that I think you said in your Ted talk is that most of us probably know somebody with autism. And a fun fact too, I think from what I've heard, 90% of men are autistic because just of just the way they operate. And I've already shared that with you a little bit about myself that we both like uh structure <laughs> and I'm with you there. I don't know if you, like I said, I don't know if you all get diagnosed, but it's a possibility. <laughs> exactly. Always a possibility. Now, let me ask you this, Sam. You talked about some of those dark times. And, and again, I know a little bit about your story. I know that uh, you were bullied in school. You know, for anybody who's bullied, whether they have autism or maybe they just speak differently. Or I remember I moved from California to Nashville when I was in sixth grade and I didn't talk like the kids back there, that's for sure. And so I know that some of them thought I was a little bit odd, but it's just because you're different, right? So, I mean, anything, and as a kid, especially when you're in school, you really don't like being different. You want to kind of fit in and be like the rest of them, but sometimes eh, it is what it is. So you know what that's like. And like you said, it was a dark time, right? Oh, yeah, big dark time. And it was frustrating because I had stuff to share. It's just no one would hear it out. You almost feel like a ghost. When you're getting bullied, sometimes you just want to kind of fade into the background because it seems like the only attention you're getting is negative. Yeah, and that's why I like to fade in the background a lot today. Even with my friends, sometimes they'll notice I'll fade in the background. So I noticed that you said you didn't really play any sports, but you did have some interest. And I know one of them, I guess even now, you still like professional wrestling, right? Oh, yeah, big time, buddy. I've had several wrestlers on my show to make you even better. I've had like Mick Foley on, Kane, Jake the Snake Roberts, Buff Bagwell, Victoria, RVD, Al Snow, and Raven. Oh, that's great. And tell people, what's the name of your podcast? Autism Rocks and Rolls. It's a podcast about autism and how we cope with daily struggles that you may or may not understand. Yeah. And like I say, I've I've done a little bit of research on it, and you've had, um, you've had a lot of folks on there and some... You know, like you said, you named off some of those famous wrestlers. You've also had Temple on there as well, right? Oh, yeah, the biggest autism advocate out there. She is changing the agricultural world in so many ways. She's the reason why cattle go to the slaughterhouse willingly, and it's not a battle for the ranchers. Uh, I think, I'm trying to remember her last name. Is it Grandin? Mm-hmm. Yep, Temple Grandin. Yeah, you've had some. you've had some really influential people on your podcast, so... Yeah, good for you, man. That's great. I mean, sometimes, hey, I'll be honest with you, sometimes it's hard getting folks to get on the podcast, but you're doing a good job. Honestly, if you just have persuasion and a charm, maybe, I don't want to say a bit of a charm, but a little bit of persuasion and you got a smile on your face, I guess it can work. <laughs> good advice. <laughs> Let's talk about when you started your foundation. And again, Autism Rocks and Rolls. You started that, was it in 2020? Yep, 2020, the COVID years, which I think was a bad time to start. But after 2020, things started picking up. And, you know, that's the year I started my podcast. I think we were all looking for some things to do. You probably went through a period of time because you were in high school then, right? Uh, yes. Trying to think of how it went. So freshman summer year, we're like usual. And then the COVID-19 pandemic hit. They sent us home for spring break. And we just thought it was a silly little virus oh we'll go away no the second semester of my junior year i was online and then the senior year i came back we had other code regulations it was winter time in the senior year and i had to do back to online but then once it was spring we started coming back to school hybrid and then it was just regular back to in person like the covid never happened was it tough being at home and being away from your friends and you know, you've talked about structure. I mean, you kind of had, I'm sure, a system down when you were going to school. And now, bam, you're stuck at home by yourself. Yeah, well, at first you saw the kids were excited to be home. <laughs> yeah. But then the students were like, oh, 
this stinks really bad. I have no one to talk to. And as you know, humans are social creatures. It's just inhabited on us. We're social creatures. Even if you're the most less social person out there, you're gonna you want to socialize with someone because it kills you not to. You may not realize it, but it does. No, I agree. I mean, and not only that, we know that for our mental health, being social is important and having connections and having friends and family that you visit with on a regular basis. So those are important things. And that's one of the things that COVID kind of stole from us a little bit. We were kind of isolated in some people more than others. So, but it did bring about your foundation and, and how did that come about? What, I mean, did you just think about it? Uh, did you talk well, to your mom about it? How did it work? So we started seeing the podcast growing. It was going on from 20, 40, 60, 80, over a hundred listens. Well, then I didn't know, I wasn't friends with the guy, but his dad heard about me. I think it's a stepdad now. So pretty much took me under his wing and said, we're going to get you some microphones and some soundboards, better soundboards. Okay. Now we want to have a board. Okay. Oh, we also have sponsors for the show, which I didn't know you could have sponsors for our podcast. I just thought that was for TV and movies and radio, not for podcasts. Mm -hmm. Then next thing you know, we're going to start a gala. All right. Don't know what a gal is, but let's learn about it. So we had an event. Then in 2022, I got invited to speak in Oklahoma, which was my first speaking gig. Okay. So the opportunities came to me, but then I extended it on later as it as more came. And and again, back to what you said, personality and smiling, right? I guess so. <laughs> got me somewhere, apparently. Yeah, it did. No, that's pretty good. Let's be honest. I got it. I can be, be smart, but you ask my friends around me, they would say I'm pretty dumb because I I act like an idiot around them. The key word there was act. Again, I've done a little research, I listened to your TED talk, uh just just conversing with you. I think you're a pretty smart kid. You know what's going on. I, I try to at least know what at least is around my surroundings. Hey, let's talk a, a little bit about your uh like for rock and roll music. When you say rock and roll, what kind of music? Is that more my bands and my era or is that current music? It's more of old genre, 2000s, so ACDC, Nickelback, Elvis Presley, Motley Crue, Papa Roach, Breaking yeah. Benjamin, Metallica. Yeah, and your mom likes Tom Petty. I'm not a Tom Petty fan. That's for her. Uh, Skillet <laughs> is one of them. And then also Tenacious D. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Jack Black. Mm -hmm. Fun fact. Although I didn't get to have him on the show, Jack Black's publicist did respond. There you go. Well, that's pretty good. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of your music uh, I listen to as well. And, I, and I'm quite a bit older, but, you know, I have kids that are, you know, in their 30s and 40s. And so they all like the music I listen to and that my wife listened to, which was some of the bands you mentioned, but, you know, other things like the Doobie Brothers in uh, Kansas and John Mellencamp. Isn't he from Indiana? Yes, he is. But, from what I've heard, he is not the nicest person alive. I you don't know, know if that's what? true I'm, or I'm not. sure a lot of artists are it's like just, that. It's media right? saying he's not the nicest guy. People have smugged him when he's went to Bloomington, and he smugged people back Yeah, when they went to Bloomington. I, I've talked about this on some of my, my podcasts in the past, but for about 10 years, I worked all the big boxing matches in, in Las Vegas. So I got to see Mike Tyson win the title when he was 20 years old, and I've seen Sugar Ray Leonard. I've seen a lot of big boxers. And a lot of them are very nice, but some of them aren't. And a lot of the people that come to those boxing matches are very nice, but some of them aren't. So I guess I give people a break sometimes because when you're famous, you, I don't know the kind of day they've had. And here I am, just some guy maybe talking them up. And maybe they're tired of being talked to. And so I don't know. I think that uh, when when people talk about John being smug or whatever, maybe he was just having a bad day. And I get that. We all have bad days. Yeah. But doing that each time you go to Bloomington, come on. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the price you pay, in my opinion, also of being famous. If you know fame's coming your way, you probably gonna expect people approaching you in the street if you go to Freddy's. Oh yeah. It's gonna happen. Comes with the territory. Nice. <laughs> seem to fill up my fire there's no place i'd rather go that could take me any 
I know you want to be at some point, if you could maybe write your own script, you'd want to work in radio. Is that right? Yeah, I'm working in radio right now. I'm in college studying broadcasting, but I get to help out with my student radio show by doing really good at it, trying to. So, Except today, I completely forgot about the talk day, which was really idiotic of me, but live and you'll learn. But I got to internship over my summer at a radio station, which is an hour from me in Bedford, Indiana. Called WQRK, Southern Indiana's Classic Hits, 105.5. Nice people, small town station. And they took me in. We had a lot of fun. That's great. And so you're majoring in broadcasting. Yep. Well, that's what I did. I got my degree in broadcast communications. I did sports for a NBC television station for a while. A short while, I should say. But uh, but enough to know that it, I was going a different direction. But I really enjoyed it. And I thought the classes when I was in college, were a lot of fun, too. Oh, yeah, they are a lot of fun. I'm enjoying the audio production, so I know I'm in the right territory. And Mm -hmm. I'm making good grades, so guess I'm doing something, right? Yeah, it's a fun genre. And and I'll tell you, even though we have AI now, right, and all this new technology, I think we're going to have radio and television around for quite a few more years. Oh, yeah. It's funny, though, because a lot of the radio and television are produced by old men. I'm not saying all, it's just the majority. And it's funny because I definitely think I was born in the wrong genre when it comes to the media side because of the radio. Radio exists in the more I could probably understand and maybe peek at the radio station a little bit. I think also with the music, you could tell my music was a little from the older side. Today's music is bleh. (laughs) I tell you this. If you listen to some of the music that I put on my podcast, and when you listen to this, this our talk today, when it comes out and it's finished and you listen to it, if you listen to the the band I'm going to put in the middle, they're called Kaloe Kai, and they're from the island of Oahu, and these guys met in high school. They're probably all, I'm just guessing now, they're probably in their late 20s, but they're not very old, but they, they're a great band, but again, they they play, they just had a tour where they were on the West Coast, and they played Vegas. They're really big in Hawaii, but will they be able to break 
grew and become popular in other parts of the world and in America? I don't know, but I think you'll like it is what I'm saying. If you like, because I listened to the bands that you said you liked, and I think that there's a, a little room to like these guys too. All right. I'll take a peek at it. So, hey, let's talk a little bit for just a minute about controlling chaos with structure. I mean, that's, I understand what that means. What are some of the things that you do that you you feel like has helped you to be able to, uh, you know, control chaos? Establish a routine I can do every day of the week. Because I'm in college recently, and I just have to make up, all right, at 7.30, I get up each day, and I try best to go eat at the breakfast hall at 8.30. I try to get up at my study room by now. I got into class by 11. I have this radio show I got to help with, so I know at 9 a.m. from 11 a.m. I'm doing that. It's just playing out the day, knowing what's ahead. How do you handle when things don't go the way you are used to them going? I have to rearrange it and just figure out a new plan B off the bat. Although I'm not the best with plan Bs. I'm a guy who likes to do it all the way or none the way. Let it go or make it stay and do it. I remember you talking about your 16th birthday party. And wasn't that where you said you had to put your foot down or... No, that was when pretty much my parents made the whole thing structured and formal, which is a plan to a plan. We're like, all right, this time we're doing this. All right, this time we're doing this. Now, if I was a little child, sure. But I'm 16. I don't need that. I think at that point, I should have some loose ends to it. There should be some structure. Okay, maybe at 16 years old, we're not going to go sneak off into the woods, for example, because of just things happening in the woods. Sure. But she be able to let loose and not be like, go to this place, go to this place. Yes. Got it. Got it. We haven't really talked about Hawaii much other than our introduction, but have you been to Hawaii? And if not, do you have a plan to go to Hawaii sometime? Unfortunately, we want to, but the, it is so stinking expensive to get a ticket from where I'm at to get to Hawaii. Oh, yeah. And yeah, it's that's... ridiculous. We We were about to go to... But unfortunately, my father had to have knee replacement surgery. So the Hawaii money came to, came out to become the surgery money. Sure. I went to school in Hawaii. I We had a place for 14 years in Hawaii. I mean, it's a big part of my life. Probably about half the people I talk to have never been. So it's it, I, I understand that. It's very expensive. And sometimes, you know, that just plays into it. That's just part of life. It, it's so stupid, though. We, we want to go bad. Like we want to go bad, yeah, but and- gosh dang, dang, lower the prices, why don't you, a little bit? We're not that rich. <laughs> when you guys fly, so do you go out of, out of Indianapolis? Yeah, Indianapolis Airport, yep. Got it, okay. And let's talk just a little bit about some of the things that you've done, because you talked about your first speaking engagement being in Oklahoma, but you've had other times that you've spoken to, right? Yeah, that was just my first big one. I've done like little ones here and there, but that was my first big one at now it's translated to going to Canada twice, Orlando three times, Stewart, Florida. I know I got invited to be a keynote speaker in Daniels, West Virginia at a behavioral conference in November. Yeah, I saw that on your website. Yeah, coming up in November in West Virginia. I've been through West Virginia, but I never stayed in West Virginia. reason I got to be a West Virginian for a little bit is I totally moved to just regular old Virginia to see the Edgar Allan Poe Museum because she's an English teacher. And apparently she loves Edgar Allan Poe. So I just took her to the Poe Museum. That's cool. What are some of the things that you're looking to accomplish with your foundation as you're going forward here over the next year or two? Change the stigma of autism and to see these reasons we're getting ridiculed is so stinking stupid. I mean, it's so frustrating that people still don't believe there's one person with autism and it's the same way for every person. There's a reason why it's called autism spectrum condition. There's a spectrum. Sure. So maybe you have this child who is on the spectrum and he's 22, but he has the mindset of a three-year-old, which is what most people see. We can't go to the bathroom on our own. We have to have someone brush our teeth. Someone has to organize our medicine for us, which is some people on a spectrum. I know someone on a spectrum who's like that, and if you put him in the house by himself, it's not going to be pretty. But here's the kicker. People forget there's another sign. It's the middle end and the high end. The middle end is maybe they have the mindset of eight-year-olds. So maybe they can get dressed, 
But if they try to clean the house, it's going to be a disaster. Right. But then there's people like myself who can go to college, who's living in a dorm, as you can see, perfectly capable of doing it, may I add, who can also go to college, get a job in the future, maybe one day get married and have children, buy a house, live a successful American life. You forget about that population. And I am, I am different. And a lot of people, especially Marjorie, even have very unique interests. But who cares? I'm a human. We deserve some attention, don't we? Yeah, absolutely. And you're right. There is a spectrum. And I think that uh, sometimes people forget that. So, yeah, good for pointing that out. Well, and, and you know, you're doing some great things. And, you know, I and know it's that also they... fresh. I forgot to add, if you don't mind me interrupting you. Sure. They don't know how to take us. So if you're on that lower set, where they have a mindset of three-year-olds, they understand how to take them because of sympathy. They feel bad for them. Unfortunately, when you're on the higher end, for some people, they don't feel sympathy. They're like, ooh, he, he's on a spectrum. I'm walking out because I'm he's going to be creepy. No. I have some social deficiencies, but I'm not a bad guy. And I think sometimes that people just don't know how to maybe how to behave or act around people who are different. Remember, we talked about that earlier, you know, when I even when I moved as a grade schooler to Tennessee, I think some people are kind of like, who's this guy? <laughs> yeah. And then and then later I moved back to California and it was all over again. Who's this guy? <laughs> you know, so but that just t until people get to know you. Don't you find that to be the case, Sam, that once people get to know who you are and stuff, any of those preconceived notions or ideas, they kind of. They kind of just go away. For some people, yes. For some, no. I think you're always going to have those people who believe it's still the 1950s and should be institutionalized. So I would say to that, they just have not been educated. And, you know, it's no better, do better. Once we know, then we respond differently. So I hope you don't run into many people like that. Oh, well, unfortunately, I have, but not many. One of the things I know you like to do, and it's funny because we were talking about all your traveling and your speaking, I know traveling is kind of one of your hobbies, right? Yep. So for traveling, I like to go to Florida just because it's very similar to the weather to Hawaii and the yeah. palm trees. Man, mm -hmm. it's just great. I've been to Texas once when I was a child, Destin three times, Washington, D.C. actually for a vacation. It was a class trip. I've been on several fishing trips to Mississippi with my father. I went to Cincinnati, Ohio, to Kings Island and Great Wolf Lodge. And then I went to Louisville a couple times. One was to go see a rodeo. And then the other is to go see the Mega Caverns and Mammoth Cave, which is a big state park. Yeah. I think you've heard of it before. Yeah, what been, it sounds I've like. been there too. Yeah. yeah. It's a pretty fun place. And then we've also been to Gautenberg and Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, where I made my dad get on stage at the Comedy Barn. How did, how did he like that? I think he hated me for it. But <laughs> I was a young kid. I was trying to like, okay, we got we to gotta we have some fun. We got to get this guy on stage just to see what would they say. And I think the guy who was the actor saw me point like, get him, get him. I know someone. Get him, get him. I know someone. Get him, get him. <laughs> and then he was like okay we're gonna make this kid we're gonna make this kid happier than hell give me that guy right over there and he went up there uh he was a good sport oh yeah he my dad is a good sport hey when you went to mammoth cave did they like shut the lights off and let you see oh, how yeah. dark it was? <laughs> yeah yeah they shut the lights off. my mother freaked out completely she was like oh my god where's my son at i think i was like 12 years old when i went there i think that was when i went there too except i probably was in a different year I know when it was dark, you couldn't see your hand in front of your face. That's for sure. Oh, yeah, I couldn't either. I was like, oh, boy. I just stayed still because I was like, I am not moving inch because I do not want to fall off and get trapped in a, between two rocks. I just want to tell you, Sam, that I really appreciate, you know, your willingness to come on the podcast and kind of talk about what you're doing because you're doing some really good things and you're helping lots of people. And I think that that's, to me, I just think that says a lot about the individual. So that says a lot about you. You're helping people understand autism that there is a spectrum and that you know a lot of people with autism can still be very productive and do some good things and you're doing them just try and do what i can do man i don't want to be where i once was i don't want other people to be where i once was just in a so bad place where he considered drinking at the age of 15 and tell his parents that because he didn't want it to bring the burn on him 
but he considered it. Right. So if people want to uh, follow you, what you're doing, let me make sure I got this right. The website is autismrocksandrolls.com. Yes, sir. And I'm going to put that in the show notes as well. Is there any other thing you'd like to talk about before we end today? Well, I can tell you what's coming up. So as I mentioned, I have the keynote speaker coming up in November. I also have a couple online summits. And then unfortunately, we got canceled out on this one due to rain. But next Monday and the following Monday, we'll be having what we call a special needs science where special needs children, mainly on the autism spectrum, to go to our local Fowler pumpkin patch and pick out a pumpkin. Cool. And then let's see what else. We'll be selling food for some money. Got to bring in the money somehow. And then in December, this is a big question mark. It's probably going to happen, but it's too close to call. We don't know for sure. We'll be having something that we call Breakfast with Santa. So that means kids can go get a picture with Santa while having a pancake and waffle breakfast on that same day, or maybe not, don't know yet. We'll be having a polar plunge. (laughs) <laughs> yeah you can leave me out of that <laughs> oh yeah i'm trying to tell them i'm not doing this i'm not diving in i'll I'll watch you do it but i'm not doing it but i know my parents they're probably gonna make me and then i'll be like oh yeah well you know what i say i wouldn't do it but if it was for a good cause i, I would do it yeah but my, i think my grandfather wants to do it so he's probably gonna make me knowing him and not willingly he'll probably carry me and put me in the water knowing him <laughs> You know, you're doing some great stuff. That's what I was talking about. That was before I even knew about all these things you got lined up. But you're just doing a lot of good things. And that's what we need. Just good humans out there, you know, helping each other. And really, I admire you for what you're doing, buddy. Well, I try to do what I do, man. It's just I don't want people to be where I was. And I just feel like if you could be nice and not act so stupid, I think the world could be a much safer place. That's right. That's just not for those on spectrum. That's for everybody. That's for everybody. Like you say, just be pleasant and have a smile, right? Yeah. Apparently, <laughs> it gets it gets people will at least respect you. Sam, I appreciate it, buddy. Thanks for being on the podcast today. Anytime, brother. Thank you for letting me come on again. All right, everyone. Hey, check back in two weeks. We'll have another interesting guest here on Nobody Knows Your Story. Aloha, Sam. Aloha, mahalo. far away let's talk story it's where my mama was born it's where i come from it's where my daddy fell in love not long ago let's talk story Well, a little of this and a 